Sorrow is a big theme in many Reba McIntyre songs, probably because it's a subject the singer knows very well. From enduring a horrifying tragedy to losing her biggest supporter, the country icon is no stranger to heartache. Country music touts a lot of ideas about small-town living and the simpler things in life. For her part, Reba McIntyre is no stranger to a life outside of Hollywood and Nashville, as the Grammy award-winning artist grew up in a small town in Oklahoma. In an interview with CNBC, the singer recalled growing up on a cattle ranch about 15 miles outside the nearest town. Doing simple errands like shopping for groceries required a long drive. But those small-town memories have stayed with her. McIntyre spoke about one of her fondest memories of taking her little sister Susie to the movies and realizing the pair didn't have any money. She told CNBC, So we took the back seat out of Mama's car and we found enough change to get in, get some popcorn, and get us a drink. When asked in an interview with Cowboys and Indians whether she still maintains her Oklahoma roots, McIntyre said her family keeps her humble, adding, When I go home, I'm just Reba. I'm not Reba who gets up on stage and sings. Somebody asked Alice, my older sister, they said, Is Reba different than everybody? And she said, Reba is just like everybody else. She just happens to sing better than some. McIntyre realized she had a gift at an early age and has said that singing often got her out of trouble. She told CMT.com, when I was going to sing, everybody stopped playing dominoes or whatever and would listen. She started singing in the first grade after volunteering to perform the solo for her town's Christmas program. The country legend's first time holding a microphone was during her performance of Away in a Manger, and it led to several other performances. When McIntyre made it to junior high, she formed a country western band alongside her sister and brother and several other kids from their class. She told CMT.com, We would play functions at school, but also we would borrow the equipment, the sound system, and we would go play clubs on weekends. And we'd get in late, late, late at night, and we'd put it all back where we needed to. Though she was always a very talented singer, it wasn't a lifelong dream of McIntyre's to sing in front of audiences. In fact, from an early age, she saw herself becoming a professional barrel racer. That was my lifetime goal. That's what I wanted to be, was a champion barrel racer. Her childhood growing up on a ranch led her to spend a lot of her time at the rodeo, where she quickly became enamored with the sport. McIntyre's father and grandfather were champion steer ropers, and she competed in several barrel racing competitions throughout high school and college. She eventually changed course, however, after her father gave her some sound advice. She told CMT.com, Daddy would just point-blank tell me, Reba, I don't know why you want to do something you're not good at. It was very honest. And I would say, well, what do you think I ought to be doing? And he said, sing. You ought to be singing. Eventually, McIntyre took her father's advice and sang the national anthem at the National Finals Rodeo in 1974. She then caught the eye of musician Red Stiegel after singing a Dolly Parton song at a rodeo. Stiegel later got McIntyre in touch with music executives, which led to a recording contract. While her undeniable talent caught the eye of many in the music business, McIntyre still pursued a college education. The singer went on to attend Southeastern Oklahoma State University, where she majored in elementary education and minored in music. However, her father was hoping she would make a name for herself with her voice. McIntyre told CMT.com, Well, Daddy stepped in again when I was in college. I loved college. I loved school. Anything besides having to work on the ranch? I was for that. I would go to the National Finals Rodeo every year with a bunch of my friends down in college. We had a great time. Eventually, her father pushed her to do something more than sit on the sidelines. McIntyre recalled, Daddy said, instead of going up there having a good time, why don't you go get you a job? McIntyre did just that, returning to the rodeo not as a bench warmer, but as a musical act. In 1991, McIntyre endured a heartbreaking tragedy when her tour manager and seven of her band members were killed in a plane crash. It, it uh, made me realize how precious life is. And all I could think of was their mothers. In a 2012 interview with Oprah, the singer recalled receiving the devastating news at the crash, saying, The tip of the wing of the airplane hit a rock on the side of Otai Mountain, and it killed everyone on the plane. It's been 20 years. It's just like, I don't guess it ever quits hurting. McIntyre later turned her sorrow into music, and in 1991 released her critically acclaimed album, For My Broken Heart, to honor the loss of her band members and tour manager. Her title track rose to the top of the charts, eventually earning the number one spot on the Billboard Hot Country songs. McIntyre hasn't had the best luck when it comes to love. The country music star tied the knot with her first husband, Charlie Battles, in 1976, but the two split up 11 years later. 
She then fell in love with her former band member, Narvel Blackstock, whom she met when they were both married to other people. After her divorce was finalized and Blackstock had separated from his partner, the two began seeing each other romantically. They went on to get married in 1989 and later welcomed their only child together, a son named Shelby. McIntyre and Blackstock's love story came to an end in 2015, however, when they announced their separation after 26 years of marriage. As her marriage crumbled, so did her business relationships. While appearing on Apple Fitness Plus, Time to Walk, McIntyre explained, I had my production manager who left, I had my CEO who left, my manager and husband, and my father had died. I started taking over signing the checks. I made the money. I brought it home. So it was a huge, huge change for me. McIntyre may be a country music legend, but she is constantly working on her acting career, too. The singer had dreams of being on the silver screen at a young age and liked to pretend she was starring in her own films. She told CMT.com, I always wanted to be a movie star. If I was going down to the roping pen or hauling off trash, I thought there was a camera on me all the time. She got her acting start in the 90s, appearing in films like Tremors and The Little Rascals. But her breakout role came when she starred in her own TV series, Reba. The show ran from 2001 to 2007 and centered around Reba as she navigated the ups and downs of being a single mother. The television series was nominated for two Primetime Emmy Awards, with McIntyre earning a 2004 Golden Globe nomination for her performance. One of McIntyre's biggest movie roles was in the 2023 film The Hammer, in which she played a judge whose sister becomes a suspect in a murder investigation. The singer acted alongside her real-life boyfriend, Rex Lynn, who helped her rehearse many of her lines. She told Yahoo Entertainment, By the time we got to do our scenes together, it was just, you know, like talking to each other. Like many country music artists, Reba McIntyre's faith is a big part of who she is. While she's been open about her love of God and how her faith has guided her throughout her career, she's also admitted that she doesn't expect anyone to feel pressured to follow. She told the Saturday Evening Post, I'm not out to teach or preach. I'm just showing everybody that I'm happy the way I am because of my faith. It's a relief to me that God is always taking care of me, always helped me through the hard times, and is always there with me in the great times. It's her faith that led the singer to drop a gospel album in 2017. The record, Sing It Now, Songs of Faith and Hope, marked her first gospel project and features her take on classic hymns such as Amazing Grace and Oh Happy Day. Her venture into new territory went on to win the 2018 Grammy Award for Best Roots Gospel Album. In her acceptance speech, McIntyre says she has carried these songs with her throughout her life, adding, Our job in the entertainment business is to heal hearts. That's what God put me on this earth for. I know it is. Music is so healing. I love my job. I'm so grateful to get to do it. If a country artist is singing about fishing or beer cans rolling around in the back of the truck, McIntyre doesn't want to hear it. The singer sat down for an interview with PBS in 2019 and admitted that she doesn't like the male-dominated themes in some of the genre's recent songs. The conversation was sparked after the American Country Music Awards failed to nominate a single female artist for the Entertainer of the Year category. McIntyre said, It's gotta change. It's the bro trend. Hey bro, let's go down to the river and catch some fish and everyone's a good old boy. And that's the bro music. I would really like it to get back to the real strong country, the country of Merle Haggard, Conway Twitty, Ronnie Millsap, Mel Tillis. I miss that kind of country. McIntyre met her partner Rex Lynn decades ago, but it would be nearly 30 years before the pair saw each other again in 2020. On an episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, the country star recalled how she met the CSI Miami actor in 1991 while they were working on a film together. She said, We've kept in contact with each other over the years, and we started texting and talking on the telephone, getting That's to know great. each other better during the quarantine. The pair made their Instagram debut when Lynn posted a photo with McIntyre in January 2020, writing, Had a fantastic dinner with this Oklahoma girl. Tater tots and ketchup included. McIntyre later confirmed their relationship in October of that year on her podcast Living and Learning. She also said that she and Lynn relate to each other through their similar careers in entertainment. McIntyre explained, Discussions about our past, our family, funny stories, him being an actor, me being an actress. And he's very into my music. I'm very into his career. The jury is still out as to whether or not the pair will get married. However, as McIntyre has endured her fair share of heartache, she told E! News, If he says I want to get married, yeah, that's fine. If I say I want to get married, I'm sure he'd say that's fine. 
But we get along so well right now, why rock the boat? McIntyre reached a breaking point in 2020 when her beloved mother, Jacqueline, died. The two had an incredibly close relationship, with Jacqueline being the singer's biggest supporter. After her mother's death, the singer admitted to her sister that she was questioning whether or not she could continue her career. She confessed in an interview with Today, Oh, I didn't want to sing. I told my little sister Susie when we were working at the house, I said, I don't know if I want to sing anymore. She said, why? I said, because I always sang for mama. Eventually, McIntyre found her voice and used it to release her 2023 single, Seven Minutes in Heaven, which was inspired by her mother. The track talks about mourning the loss of a loved one and wanting to share another moment with that person again. McIntyre also revealed how Lynn has helped her find the fun in life again following her mother's death. She told Today, Rex is a very uplifting, positive man, and I love him with all my heart.